um, after that performance last weekend, yeah. is the challenge now for you uh, just to try and keep performance levels at that height for the rest of the season? Do you think you can replicate that throughout the rest of the season? Um, yeah, well, it's always going to be more difficult when you travel away from home. So, um, you know, respecting the opposition is the big thing. So, uh, reasonably short week this week. Guys have worked hard in the few days that we've had. So, um, a couple of changes in the team, as you will have seen as well, which is just gives us that bit of freshness. Um, you know, we have a good competitive group and there's a few good few guys that are disappointed to miss out, which is understandable because it's a, it's a huge game for us again. Um, so yeah, like we, we've sort of gone through this period where we're waiting, waiting, waiting for a game and a uh, lot to talk about, I guess, the work that's gone on behind the, in behind the scenes in terms of coaching and um, even just in terms of the physical condition of the players. Um, you know, so then you, you have this big performance, but then it's the challenge is just to try and turn it around very, very quickly and try and do it again. So, um, but yeah, that, that's the challenge for the group. Um, I think the guys are excited to get going again. Um, there'll be a bit of a change clearly next week then um, with guys going into national camp and you know we'll be trucking out to play against Cardiff away next week as well. Yeah, it seemed like you channeled all, channeled, channeled all your anger and your frustration with the, the decisions made by the EPCR into that complete performance. Is that the best way to cope with these decisions that are out of your hands? Yeah, like, the decision is clearly very, frust very, very frustrating. We feel we're, you know, the very harshly punished, I guess, um, for, for the situation, the way it played out. Um, but again, like all we can do is just control what we can and that's trying to put in these performance on the field now. And um, yeah, like it's, we've had great battles away in the wreck against Bath over the years. Um, think back to when I played even, you know, like it's, it's a tough place to go. And, um, nice tight venue, um, extremely tight dress rooms for anyone that's been in those dress rooms um, over there. And um, yeah, no, it's a club with a very proud tradition, and I know they're going through some changes there at the moment. Um, you know, but you know they're they're they've got a good win against Worcester in their last home game, and um, yeah, we just need to make sure we're um, well prepared, and that's what we tried to do this week. And aware of all the threats that Bath have, um, you know, their team that you know they've they've tried to play a much more free flowing brand of rugby this year, so we know they're incredibly dangerous when when things click into gear for them. Yeah, as you say, it should be a tough test this weekend. Um, although last weekend was great for the confidence, it might not have been the, a tough, tough test for you. Do you think, given the six-week break you had before, you might be heading into this one a little bit cold? Um, yeah, well, that's always the worry for sure. For sure, yeah. Um, but you know, the guys, as I said, they've worked hard. Um, you know, they, they trained hard, and particularly on Wednesday, um, good session there. And you know, guys are just excited to get going again and playing. Um, you know, because a lot of guys are light on game minutes um, for for the obvious reasons. Um, and yeah, like I, th I think whoever just wants to put their hand up and perform well for the team and you'll know, see where we lie at the end of the weekend's um, play. Um, but for us, like, what can we control is just putting in a big performance, 80 minute performance again. That's what we talked about going into the game last week. Um, and I thought for the most part, you know, the players acquitted themselves very, very well. So it's more the same really. Um, but understanding you're you're starting from scratch against again away from home, slightly different environment. So um, you know we get over. We'll we'll have a look around the ground later on this afternoon. So um, and just again, it's just focusing on putting in that big performance again over eighty minutes and see is try and get as much as we possibly can out of the game. Great stuff. Thanks, Emilio. Best luck. Thank you. Leo, hi, it's Michael Corcoran. Um, can I ask you, not just about the team, but just maybe some of the people who are not involved this weekend, uh, Tyke Furlong and the two James, James Ryan and James Lowe, what their state of health is at the moment? Yeah, well, James, he came on at halftime at the weekend um, against Montpellier. He trained on, what day was that, Tuesday, yeah. Um, so he just picked up a... A niggle that on that Tuesday, yeah, it was very unfortunate. Um, what didn't even seem to have a major event, but anyway, he's he's a, a strain, so he'll be out for a few weeks. Um, James, James and Tyke, yeah, you know, James could have been touch and go, but we just sort of we were happy with how Ross and Josh went last week. Obviously, with Ryan Baird coming back as well, uh, Reese Rudd had been sick as well, um, so he missed the the early part of this week. I think again because the week was so short um 
Reese would have covered the sec- second row of the weekend, as you'd be well aware. He came on for Josh at 50 minutes, so um, so we were happy the way those guys were going anyway. But uh, so James, anyway, just the sensible decision just not to push anything this week. But he's okay. Um, probably could have pushed him for this week, but that was the decision was made early in the week at least anyway. Um, and Ty doesn't seem to be too bad. Um, so hopefully he'll be up and running for round one of the Six Nations. Obviously for Ireland when they go into camp next week, he should be good to go. Hopefully. Um, you know, barring any setbacks, but it, that's the way I understand it at the moment, anyway. Okay, thank you. And ter- in terms of last week, how do you build on last week? I mean, how do you uh, how do you harden yourself in terms of an assessment from last week ahead of what will be a much tougher task this week? Um, oh, there's loads of things you can still learn from the game. Um, you know, there, was, there was parts of the first half where you know some we were a little bit loose with the ball at, at certain stages. You know, and I know it's difficult because it's a, it was. It was a loose type of game. We're trying to play quickly um, and have a decent pace in the game. So it's trying to get just get that balance between having that pace in the game, but also delivering a good, accurate performance as well. Particularly early in the game, um, making sure you capitalise on every single chance that you create. So um, yeah, you know we have a few changes. I think with a to freshen up the group brings in a bit of experience. Like so Robbie coming back, you know he was the one similar. You probably could have pushed him last week, but. Again, he comes back in this week. I thought Kieran Frawley's unlucky to miss out um, because he, he was very, very good last week. Changed the halfbacks as well. Again, just for a bit of freshness in terms of voice and driving that energy in the team as well. So, um, yeah, now overall, like I think the, the group is, is in a good place. Um, you know, as I said, last week we, we love this block of games. Normally, when you're, you know, you're playing week on week over Christmas and you know, it is really is uh, survival of the fittest in many ways. Um, you know, hasn't played out this this year for you know as as we've discussed previously. Um, you know, so for us now, just trying to focus on this game, and you know, we've other games to look forward to now. And you know, we, we've a number of guys that are unlucky to miss out in terms of selection. Um, you know, getting a little bit tight on time, or um, you know, just some good competition in the group. So some very very close calls all across the board. So. Um, you know, I could I could talk about some of the guys not involved all day here on the call, um, but hopefully we'll see a lot of those guys feature now next week. Um, and it's going to be a great window for a lot of those players during the Six Nations to to play games, um, and for us to pick up valuable points during that period as well. And just a final question for me: the fact that Bath are not really going to be involved, mm-hmm. does that give them that free shot, make them more dangerous to play against? Uh, definitely, yeah, definitely, and, and that's sort of has been our, our mindset here, um, looking at Bath over the last while. So, um, you know, when we played in the Aviva you know, uh, before Christmas, you know, we had lots of good stuff in the first half, but like we had a massive drop off, and like we were very frustrated, you know, playing group and coaching group after the game with just how we how we managed, particularly the second half. Um, so that's the thing that's been sort of a big piece for us is just trying to push that 80 minute performance and you know we just got to be able to deal what's in front of us on the day as well um, you know Bath have a lot of quality in their in their squad um, and we need to be make sure we're prepped and ready for the threats that that they will bring so um, you know particularly when they're at home good man thanks have a good one thank you hi Leo Ashlyn here from off the ball how are you good thank you Good. Um, there are 16 Leinster players that have made the Ireland squad, an incredible number of players. Kieran Frawley and either Harry or Ross Byrne um, weren't in it. That was a bit of a surprise. What's your thoughts on all of that? Um, it was great for the guys selected. Um, yeah, it's like you'd, the three players you named, um, you know, Harry's been a, bit, a little bit frustrating for him. He's just come back to training now, so you know he's missed a good chunk of this period. Um, not just in games, obviously very few players have got the opportunity to play games, but even from a training point of view as well. So, um, you know, because we've got games during the Six Nations, I think it's important that those three, amongst other players, just turn their attention to that now, um, because there's a great window of, of games. You know, the games being postponed just means like there's a there's a window for guys to play. So, um, you know, they just got to turn that into a positive for them, and you know, they'll get their chances now during the Six Nations window to play. And as we know, there's plenty of twists and turns in terms of you know the injury profile of the different squads. So for guys that are playing, they just need to make sure that they're in the best possible shape now and be ready for if and when an opportunity comes. You know, it's good a class example there. Even just for us last weekend, Josh Murphy stepping in, um, you know, the day of the game and he comes in to start and 
put in a great performance and now he's back in the team again this weekend. So I think that's the way the players have got to just make sure that they're doing everything they can to be ready for when the uh, next opportunity comes along. And I'm sure the lads are probably upset they haven't been called up. You as a coach, would you ever step in there or chat to them about this sort of thing? Um, I just touch a base with them really. Like I understand some of the disappointment of you know, the receiving end of many of those calls myself <laughs> over the years as well. So... Um, but you know the guys. The guys are all good. You know they're they're good and they just they're they're good at turning their attention back to you know playing well here and you know they they know that's what they need to concentrate on. Um, so no, they they plenty of support back here um, and you know just making sure that they get ready to to play the next game, whatever that is going to be. So for some of those guys, they'll get a window to play next week against Cardiff instead of um, going into camp. So again, they get to play a game and you know be ready for whatever happens after that. Brilliant. And just the last one from me, there was talk of Jason Jenkins coming from Munster to Leinster. Um, is he the type of player, the physical player that Leinster have been searching for? Um, we don't normally comment on this speculation, but um, I could see how it would make sense for certain people's minds, for sure. Yep. Um, uh, I know Johan talks very, very highly of him, and um, he, he's, he's a big man. Um, and you, know, you see, like in some of the big games, you know, obviously with South Africa winning the World Cup and you know even that Lion series, um, you know the the emphasis is particularly around scrum and mall. Um, but you know we don't bring a huge amount of guys in from outside, as you you'd be well aware. Um, big Mike Alalacho is probably I think he's our only foreign player at the moment. Isn't he? Um, but yeah, he's Mike is obviously starting this weekend and he's had an unbelievable impact um, in the group. So sometimes a bit of that experience from the outside is is good. I think from the group. Um, you know, Mike is also a very, very big man, which is good. Um, and um, you know, him and his family think have settled in well, and um, very, very good member of the group at the moment. So um, I think you can see just him stepping in, the quality to bring. So, um, so yeah, we'll we'll comment further potentially if there was any anything official to be announced. I guess I suppose to put it politely. <laughs>